Tim got to his feet, moved to the chair opposite the minister, and lowered himself into the cushioned seat. He did a quick self-assessment as he moved. Nothing broken, but the bindings on his hands were tight and his throat felt like it was on fire. His wristwatch was gone. The finger where he wore his West Point class ring was bloody, but the ring was still in place. The raccoon eyes of the shorter security guy followed Tim's every movement, daring him to step out of line. Payback was going to be a bitch. The minister held up Tim's passport. Timothy Ernesto Trujillo, security consultant to Grand Surf and Oil, he sniffed, and a spy for the CIA. I'm... Tim's voice caught in his dry throat. He looked meaningfully at the bottle of water on the table between them. The minister sighed and made a hand motion. The shorter guard twisted the cap off a bottle of water. He held it so Tim could drink, while allowing a good amount to spill down his chest. He held his wrist so that Tim's watch was on full display. Time. What time was it? Tim tried to focus on the face of the watch, but the guard turned his wrist away. As Tim swallowed the last of the water, his mind went into overdrive analyzing the situation. He was probably headed back to China, where who knew what awaited him. His only chance at survival was to keep them talking, buy himself some time. I'm not a spy, Tim said. I thought you were the surf and shuttle. Hmm. The minister pulled Tim's phone out of his inside jacket pocket and turned it on. The minister studied the home screen. You have a beautiful family, Mr. Trujillo. Would you like to see them again? Tim nodded. Then I suggest you be truthful with me. Who else knows you are in that hangar? No one. That much was true. The minister turned the phone screen toward Tim. It was unlocked. Then why were you recording me? There was no good answer, so Tim stayed silent. Who told you about the meeting? No one. I already said I was waiting for the shuttle. The minister's thin lips twisted in disgust. You're a retired Army intelligence officer caught in an act of espionage on foreign soil. Tim said nothing. Do you know what the penalty is in China for spies? The minister asked. We're not in China, Tim said. A mocking smile. You never know. The Chinese empire grows larger every year. If there was a hand signal, Tim didn't see it, but the guards moved on him together. While Shorty went to the cabin door, the giant lifted Tim out of his chair like he was a child. He spun Tim around and marched him forward. Tim tried to struggle, but it was useless. The door of the jet yawned open. The rush of wind filled the cabin. The giant security guard forced Tim toward the door. Wait, he shouted. The minister appeared in front of him. Do you want to talk now? He yelled back. Let me see my family first. On the phone, I mean. The minister shrugged and swiped his finger up the screen of Tim's phone. The image on his home screen sprang to life. He'd seen it a million times, but his eyes drank in the details like it was the very first time. The fall of Emma's hair. He could almost feel his daughter's arm curving around his back. Mark needed a haircut, and he had the same lopsided smile that Tim saw when he looked in the mirror. And Jenny, sweet Jenny. She deserved so much better than this. Tim's eyes tracked to the upper right corner. The shield icon pulsed three times. He let his knees sag, and the man holding him leaned forward to compensate for the added weight. When he felt the shift, Tim drove his body upward and snapped his head back into the giant's face. The man's teeth cut into Tim's scalp. He hoped he'd knocked a few out. Tim lashed out with a foot and caught the shorter guard between the legs. He felt his toe sink deep into soft flesh. He pushed off the wall, trying to throw the giant off balance. The man was just too strong. He surged Tim's body forward and launched him into space. The deafening wind noise ceased. The roar of the jet faded, and Tim was alone in the dark night sky, falling. Jenny, sweet Jenny. Jenny.